So today we are looking at one of the weirdest products I've ever come across, which is the Schmincke Aqua Effect Spray. There really doesn't seem to be much information on it anywhere. When I went to my local art store, it had actually been marked down three separate times. And when I got to the checkout, the person was quite excited that somebody was finally buying it because they as staff members couldn't really find any information on it. So, after doing a bit of digging online, it seems to be their attempt at creating a watercolor effect that mimics salt. So I have two different types of salt. I have kosher salt and I have table salt. And then I've got the aqua effect spray. And so what I'm going to do is use a couple different types of paper and a couple different paints. So I've pulled three paints from three different brands. So I'm starting with a brick paint from Schmincke. I've got a Windsor Newton. And then if it seems like it actually works, I have a handmade paint. But I'm not gonna test the handmade paint until I've tried it out on the large brands because the handmade paints tend to use honey as binders and I don't know that it's been tested with a honey binder. So. It also online, the very little information it states says not cotton paper, which I think is quite interesting. They're very clear that it does not work on cotton paper. So <laughs> I'm gonna start by not using it on cotton paper. I have Strathmore 400 series and fluid blocks, which are all different cellulose papers. I think the fluid might be 25% cotton. But if it seems like it works on this paper, I am then going to try on cotton hot press paper. And if it seems like it works on the cotton hot press, then I will go to some cotton cold press and just see where we're at. I do find it interesting that they would make a product that doesn't work on cotton paper. So I am wondering if part of that is the translation from German to English on the website, but we will find out. Um, so the colors is a winter noon color in sap green. It's because it's, I believe the only non granulating color I own from them. We have yellow ochre from winter noon, and then we have cosmic creations ruby, which I don't know if we'll get to. But I thought I'd start by swatching them all out and so you could get an idea of just what they look like normally. Because they are all quite lovely colors. The sap green isn't my favorite because it's a pigment mix of a brown and a green. And there are so many versions of green earth that I just don't get it, but why they mix for it, but they have. So I've written down the pigment numbers on the little piece of scrap. You'll notice this is PR88, which is quite hard to find these days. Windsor and Newton haven't carried it in their line since I believe 2005. Um, Daniel Smith is listed as having a color that is it, but when I was at the store and I checked, it is not made with PR88 anymore. It's made with a mix of, I believe, three other pigments. They're permanent violet now. But at one point it was just pure and weird. They are quite nice colors as colors go. Um, I love the Windsor Noon Yellow Ochre. It's one of my favorite yellow ochres. So I tried to choose a color palette for this test that was 
not terrible if they touched when doing these bigger swatch lines that are going to happen on pages. Um, it won't look great if the red touches the green, I don't think, but who knows. So there you go. There's an idea of sort of what they look like to start with. And now, I think we start with the Strathmore. Because it's sort of a paper that I think most people either start with Strathmore or Canson. And so, slide this up. Use this. Constantly changing the texture of this paper, I find. Um, I never really know what the texture is going to be. It also says to mask off the area, so. I think this is how I'm going to do it. is that it wipes clean. Alright. It also says the paint has to be wet for it to work. So I have a piece of printer paper. And my plan is to do all the lines and cover and spray. And hopefully that keeps the other two sections masked off. Um, maybe we'll just go with all three. These are not pretty. They're totally even. Sure, that's going to be easy as well. Which 
shake well. It has like a weird, slightly sweet smell to it. That's how I describe it. Well, that didn't work. So, <laughs> I didn't mask it very well. So we will just use... Ah, uh, it sort of smells like hairspray. But like the good quality stuff that like dancers and gymnasts use. Um, that is what it smells like. variation. Let's do some tables as well. Uh, that. Yeah, that pretty much describes what it smells like. Just trying to like get even coverage. So I don't understand how you're supposed to be able to mask off a page because it was significantly harder than I thought it was going to be. And other than the fact that it contains ethanol and is flammable, it really doesn't say what's in it. Hmm. Guess we'll see what it looks like when it dries. All right, it's still sort of damp, this middle section, and so I'm going to throw in a little bit of salt. I'm just gonna do the coarse salt, and we're gonna look at like what a mix of salt and this weird spray stuff looks like. I don't know if it's still damp enough to do anything. It probably isn't, except in like little pockets. I'm not convinced that it's doing anything except on the red at the moment. The red is the only one that looks at all speckly. Maybe the green one a little bit. I tried to choose colors that don't really granulate much so that it was going to be easier to tell if the spray did anything. You might have to choose like a really bright yellow test it with that. So this is still drying but other than this bottom corner over here I don't really see any difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna untape this from the table and just like slide it over and I am going to grab a very very bright yellow. First um, called Fuzzy B by Cosmic Creations. I believe it's PY74. And I am going to grab very, very smooth paper. So this is fluid hot press paper. Um, I mostly use it with watercolor pencils. I don't actually like painting on it at all, but if anything is potentially going to give me texture, there's going to be this paper, statistically. Um, or not texture. If anything's going to give me like the finish I'm looking for here, which is I need something super smooth um, and super damp. Hopefully, I will be able to get this to a point that it is really damp and really flat. Or flat enough. Let's see, it's already like settling into the paper. It, this paper absorbs water so quickly. Like that could be part of my this paper could work against me as well. 
don't think. I don't really know what to do in this case. And maybe that's why it's on clearance and there's no information on this product. Maybe it just doesn't work. But. I want to find out. centimeters. That like sort of looks speckly. Uh, I can't get over how much it smells. It's not hairspray. What is it? <sighs> it's such... Oh my. It is if you've ever taken Ventolin. The asthma inhaler, like the blue asthma inhaler, that is what this smells like. It smells like Ventolin. That's what it is. Oh, I'm glad I finally figured it out. Hmm. I'm supposed to use more. Like this top edge looks sort of speckly. This bottom edge, not so much. Do I spray it again? Let's give it one more go. Because I feel like if I was painting a piece and I didn't think it was speckly enough, I would spray it again. So let's give it a fair test and spray it again. Oh, that's super interesting. So where it's hit, it seems to have already dried. Hmm. No idea what this stuff is. Yeah, it's Ventolin. It is the smell of an asthma inhaler. Huh. So, a whole bunch of it hit up here, and this is all now totally dry. So I wonder what's in it. I'm gonna have such weird lines on this because of how much paint has just settled out by the edge. But this is just like figuring out what this product is. All right, this is gonna dry. Now I say we do one more test, which is a paper that it says it doesn't work on. I'm not gonna waste a big sheet. <laughs> We're just gonna do this on Lennox cotton. So not Lennox Cotton, uh, Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, which is made by the same company that makes Lennox Cotton. Let's try Quinacridone Magenta. It's a very bright pink. So maybe they'll act different. I don't know at this point. I feel like I know absolutely nothing at this point. Like in the test on the other sheet, it definitely seemed to work better on the handmade paint than it did on the store-bought paint. So actually, let's do Quinn Magenta on one side. That's handmade. And that's Daniel Smith Quinacridone Magenta, which is the same pigment. They do look different. They're slightly different, like one is a darker, richer pink. You can tell which one I prefer to use in mixes day to day, but Daniel Smith one is still lovely. Okay. These blobs are about the same size. They're still wet. I'm gonna shake this up again. Now, 
tuck away my Tintoretto brush because I don't know that I want whatever this is in the bristles of it. Well, that was dramatic in comparison to every other one we've tested, that was dramatic. <laughs> Nothing else has worked that well. The question now is, is not for cotton paper mistranslation and it is for cotton paper. <sighs> well, we're about to try this green earth because that one really didn't work in the first test, which was on a non cotton paper. So this is C C magenta. This is D S. This will be the last test we do. But that is hopeful. So then I'm leaning towards that this is just a translation issue. Somewhere along the way, a piece of information was mistranslated. And this is actually for cotton paper. Because to me, that makes more sense. Like a big brand making a product in their professional room, it's not for cotton paper, for watercolor just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. But, who knows? Also, let me know what other obscure products you want me to test out next. I have been looking at their granulation effect. It's sort of been on my list for about two years and I've never gotten it. Because I have so many fun granulating colors that are actually granulating colors. It does constantly tempt me in art stores. That is wet. I don't want to get the edges because it's very wet. But let's see how even I can get this. The size of the Schmincke pans really bug me because they're really hard to hold on to, especially if you've got hand issues. I really struggle to hold on to them. All right, this is the last one. I think, I think it's a translation issue. I think this is meant for cotton paper. Yeah. Compared to that first one, so this is the first one, and there is, there is no marbling there. That compared to that is a pretty big difference. Though, as this one dries, At least the Daniel Smith one has lost a lot of that texture. So I think this is going to be like a wait and see how they dry sort of thing. It's a weird product. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't really use salt when I paint. But it's so rare to find Schmincke products on clearance. And it's even more rare to find a product that's been marked down that many times. And there was almost no information on it that I felt like I had to have a play with it. And if you're gonna play around with a product that there's no content on, well, it's a great video idea. It's weird. I don't, like very clearly, it like sort of worked on the yellow. Like there is definitely speckling. 
especially in the top and in the middle and get the bottom edge with it but there's also like huge pockets where there's not I absolutely love how it looks up in this mimosa section um, where it's sort of like layered speckling um, versus with salt where you sort of just get like circles most of the time this is sort of speckles on top of speckles on top of speckles which I do like. It sort of seems like a cheat to texture and dimensional texture. And so maybe that's the point. Maybe the point is it's a really easy way to get dimensional texture. But it definitely worked better on the paper that it wasn't supposed to work on because it worked best on ruby and you are getting some of that like dimensional texture at the bottom here but it's nothing like it is over here on the magenta from cosmic creations though so you're losing it in the green my paper might have been too wet and whatever it is has just like settled out into the rest of the medium it's a weird product yeah so I'd say if you can find it on like super clearance like I did I don't know what it retailed for originally um, one of the stickers is 10 oh two of the stickers are 10 and there's a 5 sticker on it um, most of the Schmincke FX products are between like 15 and 25 dollars so I'm guessing it probably fell somewhere in that range. I don't, don't know that I'd pay more than like five or six dollars for it. But it is fun, especially in this pink. I think it's really color selective and maybe that's why it's on clearance and there's so little information on it because it clearly worked really well on the Cosmic Creations handmade paint and it worked less well on the Daniel Smith paint even though swatch wise they looked almost identical after they'd first been sprayed there is almost nothing happening in the Schmincke paint swatch nothing happened in the Windsor Newton color there was some in the Cosmic Creations Buzzy B, but it seems to be really paint selective. It's weird and cool, and I'm like sort of excited I have a container of it to like play around with it more, and I also don't really know what I'm gonna do with it. But I really. <laughs> I can't get over how much I like how it looks right here. So maybe I'll just only ever use it for magenta on this one paper. Um, just love how this section looks. But it's really, it looked like it was going to do stuff here and it didn't. The paper doesn't have any of the dry spots like Buzzy Bee got. It doesn't have any of this splotching or even like this side splotching that the Daniel Smith color got or Ruby got so it seems to be color selective it seems to be very paper specific and the paper that it was supposed to work on it didn't work on which is interesting and odd and sort of fun yeah so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it was sort of a weird different video but there are sometimes those art project products you see and you go i wonder what this does and there's no information on it and it's nice when you get to be able to purchase those products and to try them out i still don't know what i think about it though so after some thinking, I decided to go in and try and paint a galaxy on 100% cotton paper again, but with handmade watercolors because clearly 
handmade paints were what was working well and I will list all the colors below and really this was just like throwing color on the page a mixture of light and dark colors and just hoping that I'd get some better results with this spray because by this point I realized that I liked how the magenta looked I just needed to find an application for this product and I went maybe it'll work in galaxies galaxies aren't something I paint super often I've painted three or four of them I prefer doing them in metallic colors not mattes but I decided to just go for it because at this point I needed to know was this a paint issue was this a paper issue very clearly they weren't working on the cellulose paper like they were supposed to they weren't really working with like big brand colors they had sort of worked with handmade paints so I figured my best chance would be using cotton paper because that's what seemed to work in my test and using handmade paints because those were what seemed to work in my test so I just went in with a whole bunch of paint and in the end I really piled the paint on I wanted there to be as much paint as this paper would take before I even tried to spray the product because I went, is this a paint to paper issue? And then I got rid of as much of the pooling as I could in hopes that it would help. And it sort of did. And I spray it. You can see how shaky my hand is. Just try to hold a piece of paper. Which makes life hard at times there wasn't a big difference and so I realized that the paper might be too wet and so I let it dry for a little bit and then I went in and I sprayed it again a bit more heavily and there was definitely blooming this time so I think it's a whole bunch of making sure paper isn't too wet but also not too dry like it has to be about the perfect ratio of dampness to get any effect and then I just left a camera recording while it dried down and you can definitely see the cells forming in the top corner I've looked up the safety sheet for what's in the product it's pretty much just water ethanol and a little bit of lemon so I'm not entirely sure why it causes the paper to dry the way it does and why it works sometimes but not always it seems to be very picky but it was definitely a fun thing to play around with um, and there were definitely blooms that occurred. I think this, other than the magenta swatches, was the best sort of application and an application where I'd actually use it in like creating the background of something would be a time where I'd genuinely use a product like this because I don't love the texture of salt whereas this is a much softer way to get that sort of speckly look without as many of the hard edges that you sort of get with salt. Based on how well the galaxy turned out, I decided to try with the Schmincke color one last time and went in with one of the super granulating colors back on the Lennox cotton paper. I will list which color it was below. I think it was Haze Indigo. But I'm not a hundred percent certain and I just went for it spraying it I went much heavier than I'd been on any of the others because I figured the green hadn't turned out and I wanted to give this like a real shot at becoming something so I sprayed it once it didn't really seem to do much so I shook the can some more and I sprayed it again and that seemed to help and 
you can definitely see the cells appearing more and more as it dried down and it was a very different sort of texture than it normally does when it granulates where you can still see like it granulating but it also has like these weird other pockets and I did enjoy that. I liked that I was finally able to get another texture out of this paint and this product because by this point I was both frustrated and confused and like not totally sure what I was dealing with anymore. So here are all of the various projects together. So here's the green underneath, there's the galaxy. You can definitely see all the little cells. I love the texture that it gave in the galaxy piece. I think it was such a nice effect and it was much softer compared to salt. Um, normally when I use salt it's a quite heavy effect. There's the magenta, which is still the most prominent one. The Cosmic Creations magenta, it worked the best on. You can see how it like sort of works on ruby in the bottom corner, but it's nowhere near as impressive as magenta. You can see it in Buzzy Bee, there are some darker pockets. But it seemed to be very hit or miss, and it seemed to be very hit or miss on what colors it worked for but I do definitely love the top magenta. Even the bottom one is interesting, it's just not quite as interesting, but the galaxy is where I think this product truly shines because it is such an amazing sky. It was gave an effect on this blue, and that's what I was going for. And ruby, it definitely shows up. Would I buy it again? I don't know. Um, I think it's on sale at Jackson's currently. Um, it's fun. It's confusing, but I do really, really like it in the galaxy piece. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that piece. What else I'm going to do with it, but I am excited to see what happens with it because I currently am obsessed with the texture that it has. I hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into an unusual product. I look forward to doing more of them in the future because it was definitely fun to film and to get to play around with something that I'd never heard of before.